Hey everyone, I'm Sarah Bell Reed and welcome back to another video. Something that I get asked a lot quite frequently is how I combine my trumpet or acoustic instruments with my modular synth setup. So today I wanna to revisit a video that I actually made a number of months ago for an online symposium hosted by my friend Omri Cohen. So Omri asked me to create a tutorial specifically about how I integrate acoustic instruments with VCV Rack. For those of you who aren't familiar with VCV Rack, it is a free Eurorack emulation software that allows you to work with modules and build out patches and explore the exact same workflow and sound world that you would get in a hardware modular synth format. I am a super big fan of VCV Rack and I use it all the time in my personal creative practice. I definitely recommend checking it out, especially if you are new to the world of modular synthesis because it's free to download and you can just start exploring and checking out different kinds of modules and getting a feel for this whole modular synth workflow without actually having to go out and invest in a hardware synth. Omri's Symposium was an awesome event that contained tons of different tutorials and talks and workshops and live performances from different modular synth artists from all over the world. So I'll leave a link in the description of this video in case you wanna check it out. But since this is a topic and a question that comes up a lot and I get asked about quite frequently, I also wanted to share a replay of the tutorial that I made here on my channel to make it a little bit easier to find and get to that information. Okay, so with all that said, here's the video on how I integrate acoustic instruments with my modular synth setup using VCV Rack. Hey everyone, I'm Sarah Bell Reed. In this video today, I'm gonna to be sharing three techniques that I use to connect my trumpet into VCV Rack. I'm gonna be demoing everything using this flugelhorn, but all of these techniques and principles that I'm going to be talking about are transferable over to any acoustic instrument that you might be using. Over the years, I have discovered a number of different strategies for how to integrate these two practices together, and I'm excited to share a few with you today. So let's get started. So in order to get sound over into VCV Rack, you're gonna need some kind of microphone or pickup and an audio interface to connect to your computer. This gives us the ability to get our real world sounds into the computer and then into VCV Rack. So to get audio from the external world into VCV Rack, everything hinges around this module here. Uh, the Audio 8 is a good place to start. So you're probably familiar with this module, using it to send your sound out from VCV Rack to your speakers or your headphones. But these jacks down here at the bottom allow you to go the other direction. So we're able to take our first audio input from our interface, for example, and we can patch that into anywhere else in our patch. All right, so now that you have sound passing into VCV Rack, you can use and think about these audio signals in the same way that you would think about other signals that are generated from other places within your patches, like noise sources or LFOs or oscillators and so on. The three techniques that I'm gonna be sharing with you today are using VCV Rack to process and apply effects to an external sound source using an external sound source in order to control different aspects of your VCV Rack patches, and using VCV Rack as a hub in order to send external control in and then turn that information into MIDI data to send out to other external uh, MIDI capable instruments and devices.
All right, so let's start by using VCV Rack to process the sound of my trumpet. I'm just gonna start off by adding a little bit of delay. So I'm gonna take this from here, run it into here. And now when we turn this up, we should hear our external audio source with some delay added in. Now, of course, delay isn't the only effect that we can apply to our sounds. The BOG audio library inside of VCV Rack has a, a ring modulator that I like using as well. So I'm gonna patch my external audio into the modulator input, and then I will grab an oscillator here and patch that into the carrier. And let's turn this up here and fine tune. Oh, of course, you have to patch our output into our mixer. All right, there we go. Even working with really familiar and standard techniques, like using a filter, can have really interesting results. So I'm gonna run my external sound source into this filter here, low pass out to the mixer. Then I'm gonna use this VCO to FM the filter. So we've been listening to everything so far, 100% wet coming from the modules. If you wanted to mix in a little bit of dry, you could just split this from the uh, channel one here into the second channel of your mixer and then balance these two channels based on how much dry or wet you want in the mix. So this patch takes things just one or two steps further here. I'm using uh, an internal synth voice, it's just an oscillator and a filter with an envelope, and it's randomly uh, kind of plink plonking around. <laughs> and uh, then I'm using this patch to also randomize the timing on this second delay, which is being applied to the external trumpet signal. So this kind of patch is a lot of fun to work with because it changes on its own and it gives you something interesting to respond to in the moment. So it's almost like you're improvising or performing with a duo partner. And because we are randomly modulating the delay here on the trumpet, it also takes the sound that I play on the horn and it um, processes, processes it in very unexpected ways, which creates yet another layer, kind of like a third voice of interaction. All 
right, so now let's talk about using external sound sources as control sources for our patches. One of my favorite techniques for using my trumpet as a control source is to use an envelope follower. An envelope follower tracks an incoming audio signal and produces a signal at its output that is analogous to the loudness of that incoming sound. So if I play louder, the signal will be higher, and if I play quieter, the signal will go down proportionally. Now, the reason why this is so cool is because it creates a really immediate and interactive connection between the acoustic instrument and the synth. And you can use the signal that is outputted from the envelope follower the same way that you would use any modulation uh, source typically inside of your patches. So instead of patching an LFO into some parameter to modulate it, for example, you can use the signal from the envelope follower and it's going to be much more uh, dynamic and interactive with your play. So for this, I'm going to split my external audio source into my delay and into the input of the follow module from the BOG Audio Library. This is an envelope follower. And I'll also patch out here from the envelope follower into the scope so that you can see the effect that it's having. And then we can adjust the overall sensitivity of the envelope here, envelope follower here using these knobs. Hello, hello, there we go. Right, so now I'm gonna take the output from the envelope follower and I'm gonna use this to modulate the delay time that's being applied to my trumpet. Now, of course, what's coming out of this envelope follower is just a signal, right? Like any of the modulation sources or other signals that you have in your patches. So I encourage you here to get creative with this because you can really and truly apply it to any parameter of sound within your patches. Another technique that I use a lot in my music is to pair an envelope follower with a comparator in order to create a kind of onset detection. So here's an example of using uh, a comparator, this module called Edge from Bog Audio, in tandem with the envelope follower. I have returned to a similar patch that we looked at earlier with the plucky bass line, this time being controlled by a sequencer. And the gates, or the clock rather, for the sequencer is being derived from the comparator. So I dialed in my threshold here using these knobs and anytime my incoming audio signal goes over this threshold, it's gonna produce a gate at this output here, which is how I'm advancing the sequencer. And whenever that audio falls back down below the threshold, the gate is going to go uh, low again. So this is a really great way to make the acoustic instrument and the modular patch really, really seem like they're connected together. Because every time I move and make a new sound, it will also advance forward. All right, so that brings us to the third technique, which is 
using a VCV rack as a hub for sending control information from the acoustic real world out to other uh, hardware external instruments. So there's a lot of different ways that you can accomplish this, but for this example, what I am doing is I'm sending my trumpet into VCV rack. I'm using the same envelope follower and comparator duo that we were just looking at. And I'm also running an oscillator into a sample and hold, and then that is going into a CV to MIDI module. So that's gonna convert the control voltage over into MIDI data. From there, I am connecting this to my hydrosynth. So what's gonna happen is every time I play a new note or a new onset is detected, from my trumpet, it's going to trigger the sample and hold, which in turn is going to generate a new MIDI note to be sent from VCV rack to the hydrosynth. The exciting thing about working with acoustic instruments and electronic instruments together, as I'm sure you are already starting to see, is that there are so many different ways to do this, and truly the possibilities are endless. I hope that these three examples today have been inspiring to you and will lead you down some new creative avenues of exploration. Hey again, it's me from the future or the present or whatever, but anyway, I'm back and I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions about how all of this stuff works, please feel free to leave questions in the comment section below this video. And if you're interested in diving even deeper into modular synthesis and patching and building out hybrid electroacoustic setups like the ones I showed in this video, I wanna let you know that I have a online course and coaching program called Learning Sound and synthesis. In Learning Sound and Synthesis, you will learn everything you need to know in order to make music and dynamic patches with modular synthesizers, step by step from the very beginning all the way through to more advanced patching strategies, performance workflows, and compositional techniques. And of course, because I am an electroacoustic musician and I'm so passionate about combining acoustic and electronic worlds together, there is a huge section of the course that is dedicated specifically to these topics as well. Learning Sound and Synthesis opens up just two times each year, so you can go to www.soundandsynthesis.com to check out if enrollment is currently open or to join the waitlist for the next round. That's it for today. Thank you so much for tuning in and for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.